being that uh, the UK economy uh, took quite a lot of pressure from the uh, Brexit vote and uh, it will be quite useful for the Bank of England really to to cut the interest rates so that they can stimulate the the economy of the UK so that they don't find themselves going into recession. Uh, Thomas, for lay people, just explain how it, it prevents recession, how this could mitigate some of the fallout from uh, Brexit, from that referendum. Yeah, our thinking is that, I mean, especially if uh, you then reduce the interest rates, then you then stimulate the economy because, uh, you know, demand uh, for, for goods and services will increase. But what is interesting is that uh, from an emerging market point of view as South Africans, we are likely to benefit from this because uh, investors will be looking for areas where they could get higher yields because uh, when the interest rates go lower in the UK, meaning that uh, investors will then start looking, shopping around for places where they could get uh, better interest rates. And South Africa is a very good option for that because um, our market currently has very attractive interest rates. And uh, hence, we are not surprised today that uh, the, the rent is quite excited about uh, these prospects of the interest rates going lower. And, and even more relief, perhaps, for indebted consumers here in, in South Africa. I guess a rate cut here uh, is not on the cards, but does this help prevent those rate hikes uh, that, that were expected to keep coming at one stage? Yeah, I think uh, for consumers it is good when the rent is stronger because uh, then it means that uh, some of the goods that we import into the country will be less priced, meaning that, I mean, you can then go and buy things uh, on a cheaper rate. But from our side, I think uh, I don't expect the South African Reserve Bank to increase the interest rates because we have just seen now our inflation has uh, you know, just sort of trimmed down a bit. And uh, it is good for our indebted and cash-strapped uh, consumers at this stage. Thomas, there's also stimulus measures expected in Japan and, and a whole lot of countries. Um, the, the Japanese Prime Minister, a, a vote of confidence in him recently, uh, though uh, people have been questioning whether central banks still have power to kickstart the global economy. Look, looking at what's happening on the market, it does seem uh, that there is faith right now in central banks. Do you agree? Yes, I think, uh, you know, this is where you really start seeing the value add by the central banks. I mean, if you look at, uh, example, uh, in the UK, where if the Reserve Bank doesn't really, you know, act in accordance to what the market expects, you might find the economy being in trouble. I mean, even us here in South Africa, I mean, if you were to find that reserve, uh, the Reserve Bank is not really responding according to the market needs, we might find ourselves in trouble. I think during this time of uh, global economic doom and where there's a lot of uncertainty, this is where you see policy makers such as the Reserve Banks really playing a key role in terms of stimulating economy and making sure that markets are balanced globally. Thomas, overall, uh, what we do know uh, thus far, the, the fallout uh, of that Brexit vote uh, seems to be more muted than, than expected. Uh, we heard uh, the drama about property stocks, some of the banking stocks. What have you been following post-Brexit and why? Interesting. Uh, I've been following I mean, two, two companies. Uh, one was uh, British American Tobacco and secondly Sibanyo Gold. And I'll tell you why. The British American Tobacco normally is considered one of our defensive stocks on, this, uh, on the JSE. And generally when you've got a lot of uncertainty on the market, investors uh, tend to move towards uh, defensive stocks uh, like the British American Tobacco. And it has done fairly well, although mm, not um, beyond expectations, but it has done fairly well. And then on the other side, we've seen the gold price I mean being excited and moving quite up just before Brexit and even afterwards and locally companies such as Sibanya Gold have really benefited out of this particular move where investors are looking for safe haven assets such as gold bonds and cash I mean Sibanya Gold alone it has moved about 20% uh, uh, last month alone which uh, it is quite a uh, good performance considering that mines have actually underperformed the all share index uh, over since uh, uh, a couple of years ago. Well, let's stay with the mines uh, because those gold miners are up today, but the platinum miners are in the red. Some concerns entering uh, strike season. What are the prospects for them? 
we really hope that we don't find ourselves getting to a strike, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, the, some of the, the platinum companies were starting to realize some of the gains as a result of the restructuring exercises that they went under as a result of the previous uh, uh, strike. And we have seen as a result of the commodity prices going up that uh, some of them were starting to really realize some benefits. I hope that uh, we won't get to a point where we're seeing a strike that uh, the guys can really find an amicable solution uh, to, to avoid the strike because it won't be good uh, for the economy as we are saying that the mining, uh, the, the platinum companies are starting really to pick up and you don't want to lose those uh, gains that we have made and it took, it took us a while to really get to where we are now. Thomas, let, let's look at another sector, retailers. Um, Woolworths uh, saying that its profits could rise quite substantially. I guess Woolies is not a litmus test of, of the economy because it um, is designed for a certain market. But, but is that good news from another sector? I think uh, at this time, at this stage, uh, any good news will take it. What is exciting about the uh, Woolworths announcement is that um, it is in line with the retail sales data that came out yesterday, suggesting that consumers are moving more towards uh, uh, clothing in terms of spending, and also we saw the pharmaceutical spending also increasing. So, meaning that uh, Woolworths is in line with uh, how the market performed in this particular period. Because when you look at their group sales, you'll see that um, a significant portion of that really uh, came out of uh, the clothing uh, part of the business. Thank you so much for your analysis this afternoon. Thomas Kokolo from Sunstrike Capital, live for us there at the JSC. More business news after the short break.